good. But, uh, my number five would be, oh, I'm trying to remember, is the Booty Man. Booty Man, Booty Man, Booty Man. <laughs> I mean, explain yourself, please. Well, I mean, he was really flashy. He's a really good wrestler, and I, I just don't know. Him. Well, He's all about the booty. That's why. He... <laughs> I can't even with DKC. I can't. I can't. If he were to fight Butcher in a match, who's going to win that? Well, I mean. I don't think they were in the same company at the same time, so... Oh, okay. You uh, sure about that? I'm pr- oh, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> that doesn't work for me, brother. <laughs> well, but, one thing I can say to help your argument, he did have Kimberly Page by his side. That's so right. Anybody, anybody who has her there, I'm, I'm going to have to be a fan of. So, you know, it is what it is. Well, his uh, move, signature move, was the high knee. The high knee, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> and you were saying Kimberly, uh, Kimberly Page, she was known as the booty babe. Yes, she was. And That's she true. had a tremendous booty. I mean, it was, <laughs> you know. All right. Well, you know. Booty man and all. Somebody <laughs> who got a lot of booty in his day and probably still does to this day. That's going to be Big Daddy Cool, Diesel, Big Sexy, Kevin Nash, all the nicknames. But Kevin Oz? Nash. Man. Huh? You're talking about Oz. Or right? Oz. Yeah. Or right. Oz, you know, Vinny Vegas, even, you know. <laughs> you know, he had many gimmicks, yeah. but, you know, you in particular, you know, Detroit NWO Kevin Nash. And as, for as cool as Scott Hall was, I was always a Kevin Nash fan. It, when it came, oh, yeah. if I had to pick one of the outsiders or the other, and you know, he he only needed five moves to beat you. That's how good he was. Oh, yeah. He didn't need to do all the gymnastics and the routines and the blah blah blah. Hell, his hair flip was a wrestling move. That's how cool this guy was. <laughs> and you know, it was just, you know, he's another guy that politically, I can't stand a word he has to say, but right. wrestling wise. The dude's awesome. And, you know, if it wasn't for a few others, he could have been number one on my list. But, you know, Kevin Nash is awesome. I agree with that. I mean, he that's why I thought, like, when he beat Goldberg to end the, the, uh, the record. Street. Yeah, the streak. Street. I was like, I was okay because, I mean, so, to me, like I said before, I thought the streak needed to be ended eventually. Yeah, but once that streak was ended, that that took a lot away from Goldberg. I mean, in reality. Yeah, it made him look weak. I don't know. I mean, but it, I mean, to kind of put credit to that, if somebody's going to beat him, make it believable, and who's more believable than Kevin Nash? You know what I mean? Yeah. At least in that point in time, you know. Yeah, so. the guy that that blows out his quad and the finger poke of doom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the finger poke of doom. I hated it at first, but now it might be one of my favorite moments in wrestling. I got to be is real it your honest. favorite move of all time? Well, I don't want to get fingered by Hulk Hogan. Casey might like that. But, yeah, Casey you know. might want to be <laughs> 
Hulk Hogan, I don't want you to finger me, so it's all good. And I'm sure that will probably be clipped, too. I can't wait for Drew to clip that one out and play it on the show. But it's okay, you know. It happens to all of us. But, yeah, no, Nash was always cool, man. Whether, you know, he was – one. I, it's funny to go back and watch in later WCW. Like, he walks to the ring in his street gear. He still has his Rolex on his wrist, and he's still wearing his fanny pack. And he's just oh. taking it off on the way to the ring, you know. He was one of my favorites. Yeah. You know, I think the f- fanny pack gets a bad rap. I mean, I used to wear one back in the day. I believe I you did. Well, I mean, I when I was a child, I used to have all my candy in there. <laughs> I, you, you, her, yeah. her case, candy, wasn't and that's what you don't want I went to the uh, I guess to the airport And ran that through the security And I happened to look over And see what it looked like It looked quite interesting <laughs> <laughs> Your fanny pack full of candy yeah. Now were you watching to make sure TSA didn't steal any of your candy I mean were you making sure Well I <laughs> I was more just curious what the looked like with the X-ray picture, <laughs> but no, this X-ray. is before nine eleven and everything. So I mean, oh okay, okay, well, that's cool. So, well, I think you all you need to do is pass uh, security check, and you're like in the because I don't even remember going on a plane, but nowadays if you need to go. Inside the airport, you have to have a ticket. So I'm not exactly sure. It's been well. well you, you, you can go to pick somebody up to the baggage claim area. You know yeah, I mean? that's pretty much where you only can do now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but I but don't anyway, it was, it was 25 years plus. Um, AJ, who you get it for, man? The master of the diamond cutter, DDP. DDP. What? Why is he for? That theme song, man. Like, seriously, like, just that Bang. theme alone. <laughs> like, I'm glad they actually, I don't know if you watched Ric Flair's last match, but when DDP came out, oh, yeah. he came out. From the guard, from the fans, and when he diamond cuttered, uh, I believe it was Jeff Jarrett, wasn't it? No, he cut some. Who else did he? Was it? It wasn't Jeff Jarrett. It was, it was it, Jay, Jay Lethal. Lethal. Jay Lethal was it? I don't remember who I he cut, but he, that, it that wasn't, song. That song. It wasn't the main event. It was somebody else. Oh. Uh, because I mean, we watched a really. Bad edited version of it. Yeah, we were. Oh, you we guys were, did. Yeah, we we did a watch of the of just Ric Flair's last match, okay. not the whole pay per view. And um, uh, Casey found a twenty seven minute version when it's really like forty five minutes long. So yeah, they kind of trimmed it down or whatever. But yeah, they trimmed a lot of it out. I was yeah, like, that theme. I haven't heard that theme in like twenty five years. The right. South High Five. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. It was a breath of fresh, fresh air to hear that song again. Oh, yeah. And I know it's a rip off of Nirvana. Smell like yeah. Heat. I get that. Oh, of course, yeah. But still, just hearing that, it just brings back memories. And then the matches, the, the feuds that he had with Savage, and it's just like... Oh, yeah. Why, he was the people's champion before The Rock. Oh, yeah. It was easy. yeah, I love Diamond Dallas Page. I you know, I had him in my you know, he was what well, my number eight, whatever seven or eight, whatever he was. Or I think it was number eight. Um, but you know, like I said, he could have been my number four just as well. You know what I mean? He, the dude's awesome. And like I said, I mean, he's a tremendous human being. He was in Ready to Rumble. I don't know how many people seen that movie, but that was a great movie. That's one of my Good bad movies. I love. That I love too. that movie. I, I, love I don't. Yeah. Great movie. Well, that was good. What you got, Casey? Number four. Well, it's the Zodiac. Jeez. Jesus Christ. What? 
Why? I don't see what's so funny. I think the guy's a good wrestler. Uh, yes, no, yes, no. Yes, he only yeah. communicates in Daniel Bryan, uh, da- Daniel Bryan chants. Yeah, that's, he oh. can only... Wow. Now, what what is your favorite... You know, what what um what draws you to the zodiac? What is it about it? Well, his entrance. I mean, he has all that really crazy black and white uh face paint. He'll go like, (laughs) and then, like I say, he only talks in Daniel Bryan chants, right? In yes and no, and uh, he wrestles quite. Similar to the Brutus. Would you say he butchers people in the ring? Yeah, I would say that. It's quite similar to some, like some of these other ones. I've, would you uh, be a disciple of a fan of Zodiac? Yes, this, I, I would say uh, that. Well, I, I, I got to give you credit for the, de- you know, for the dedication to, uh, you know, certain guys here. So, I, I mean, look. The guy was part of the Dungeon of Doom, so I oh mean, yeah, I I, 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 I I like the Dungeon of Doom, and I, I know it's cheesy and it's whatever, but <laughs> it's that ninety. I love. There's a super cut on YouTube of somebody took like pretty much all of the Dungeon of Doom clips and put them all together, and you can watch it all at one time, and it is so much fun to watch. Like if you just want to sit back and enjoy something, it's great. But yeah, it you know, but my number four is the big booty daddy himself, Mr. Math Promo. He's freaks in his peaks, Mr. Scott Steiner. I mean the big I was uh, Big bad booty daddy. I was always a Steiner Brothers fan. They were always one of my favorite tag teams. But when he became Big Papa Pump, that changed the ball game. I was like, all right. When he's just coming out with these gorgeous looking, obviously hookers, strippers, Medusa. whatever they were. Or not Medusa, Medasia. Oh my yeah, God. he had Medasia and he had, um, oh, I forget the other one's names, but he had these smoking hot women, right? I mean, he was packed to the gills on steroids. I'm surprised he had he muscles could... on muscles. Right, yeah. I mean, it looked like his skin was just going to rip open. That's how big this dude was. And, you know, Scott Steiner to me, he just, his for nothing but the promos, you know what I mean? Just Scott Steiner promos to me are tremendous. So, yeah, I mean, it's pretty simple. It's, you know. Big Papa Pump is your hookup. You know what I mean? So, I'll let you hear me. There you go. <laughs> what you got at three, AJ? I got Big Sexy Detroit himself. Too sweet. Yep. Hell yeah. I, yeah. I, I, there's, not even the, there's not even much to say. I mean, come on. Founder of the NWO, founder of the NWO yeah. Wolfpack, fucking Big Sexy. Big Diesel. I mean, whatever you want to say. I mean, come on. The oh, kind yeah. of the destroyer of WCW kind of destroyed the company. I mean, let's be real. It's true. <laughs> yeah. It is. Yeah. He I mean, himself. Kevin Nash is so cool. He was brought up in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. That's how cool right. Kevin Nash is. You know what I mean? I mean, is he my favorite wrestler? Of course. Yes. Now, I'm not just being a homer because of that, because. I'm not anything Detroit. I don't like any of those sports teams. But right. Kevin Nash, yeah. Oh, he's great, dude. I mean, he's yeah. Kevin Nash is he's he's, you know he you know, it you could almost interpret it as a like an arrogance about him, but he just has this cool factor. Like he's mm-hmm. you know what I mean? He kinda has that about him. You know. Oh, look at the Spring Break 96 incident. Some kid threw a rock at him. He jumped off the stage and beat the shit out of that kid. <laughs> and, and I mean, I know it was mentioned earlier, but whenever Kevin Nash picks up Rey Mysterio and flings him against a trailer. Yeah, just on. like a lawn dart. Was, yeah. Right, he just chunks him like he's yesterday's garbage. That was just yeah. too cool. It was like a, like a grown-ass man picking up a child and throwing him. Right. I mean, it's like crazy. 
hey Casey, are you you wouldn't be googling different gimmicks of Brutus the Barber Beefcake, would you? No, why would I do that? <laughs> because he's obviously your favorite wrestler. <laughs> well, no, like just the way you're looking at the screen, it's like you're you're just hoping he has three more gimmicks you can plug in here or something. You know. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, who's your number three then? Since you don't know what we're talking about. Uh, mine would be the final solution. I mean, the ultimate solution. <sighs> Fan of the Nazi party, are we? Is, 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 it, is no, it what no. we are? No, the wrestler. Oh, okay. I, just, I thought we needed to clarify that so people didn't uh, blast you on, you know, whatever. He, I, I, I am doing a little research because, I mean, I'm a little froggy because I, but I believe he was part of the Dungeon of Doom as well. Uh huh. But, is that what? Is that what Wikipedia told you just now? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, I had to, it's been a while. I mean, I remember the final solution, but yeah, I do just, too, and so do a whole lot of uh, people who ended up in an oven. But that's a different kind of podcast. Oh. Yeah, that's a different subject for a different podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the ultimate solution. I mean, what it says that WCW did not know. Uh, uh, he was no, he was uh performed as a member as alliance to end Hulkamania, not part of uh, oh god, Dungeon of Doom. So it was in our group, but he was the, called the alliance to end Hulk Hogan was Ric Flair and his group with the Dungeon of Doom, basically. Yep. Oh, okay, yeah, it was war yeah. game, yeah, that. That was when they had that cage that was stacked yeah, on top of the cage. Yeah. yeah, the triple cage. It wasn't the one in two thousand, but the one in ninety six. No, the, the, the one that was eight. the one that was like attached to the stage or whatever. Yep, it was a different yep. one. Yep, I yeah. remember that. They so, had no the uh the Turner's <laughs> networks did not know about that because they were getting complaints from the Jewish or organization. The, Casey, it, Casey, can you just say this sentence. Are you or answer me this question? Doesn't matter. Are you a fan of the final solution? No. I mean, I. <laughs> I, I mean, I think I could be. Um, I could test to that because, I mean, my late wife, she was half Jewish, and oh, there her. you go. Well, I mean, a lot of her. Okay, the real question is. How many brown shirts do you own? And how many burning <laughs> plus signs do you have? You do. Uh, well, the plus signs, we um, we build them. <laughs> we go to the Home Depot, and then we build them on the way over there. Oh, that's, uh, you know, that's good. I don't, well, keep, I don't keep that, like, stocked in my house. I mean, I would Well, it's probably to... best not to. It, you know, if, if somebody were to find that, you might, you know you know, have to be dealt with, you know, you might get a final solution if that were the case. You oh. never know these days. <laughs> but how many brown shirts you got? I don't, I don't have a lot of brown shirts. Quite Do you know how to goose step? Can you goose step well? Oh, I, I am not a racist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Casey, you're hilarious. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Well, you know, to get back a, somewhat on topic, because this is your typical derailed. We're going to do whatever we yeah, want. So exactly. just yep. sit back and enjoy it. But uh, yep. my number three, and may, maybe my favorite wrestler of all time besides Sting and Undertaker is Terry Funk. And when you go back to his NWA stuff to the late 99 to 2000 run Terry Funk had in WCW, you know, I thought it was tremendous. I enjoyed the crap out of it. And there are a few wrestlers that I would mark out for, but Terry Funk is one of them. And, you know, he may not make anybody else's top five, 20, whatever list of WCW stars, but I guarantee you, 
you know, he makes mine because his contributions to wrestling are tremendous. And I'm a, you know, I'm a fan of the Funker. I like old me some Terry Funk, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Let's move on to number two, then. AJ, you there? Yeah, yeah. hold on. Something happened to my phone. I, I... Oh, there he goes, AJ. <laughs> Technical difficulties, folks. We can, we can edit out whatever. It's all good. He'll be back in a minute. We'll wait for him. I... <laughs> We've only got two left. Yeah. Well, uh, there is age. <laughs> Sorry there about that, guys. That's all right. Don't worry about you it. I can, I can edit it. Yeah, this for out. some yeah, reason. Well, don't worry about it. Is everything good? Yeah. Yeah, we're all good. Uh, what's your number two, dude? Uh, Ric Flair. Woo! Love me some Ric Flair. Your boy. What's Hell your boy. Yeah. Which version of Ric Flair? You know, the normal one or the one that went to the the nut house? Ric Flair. <laughs> that's, that's a good question. Uh, or the one that uh, literally got buried in the desert. Huh. <laughs> I don't know. <sighs> that's, a good, that's a good question. Uh. How about the president of WCW when he did that elbow on the Nitro mat? Oh, he said, yeah. I'm Ric Flair, the president of WCW. Woo! When he's stripping when he's, in the ring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's throwing $100 <laughs> everywhere, Rolex yeah. rock, watches, Gucci shoes. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. I believe when he, he still the he was the president when he was in the nut house, too. I think he yeah. was, wasn't he yeah. making calls to uh, Charles Eric Bischoff. Oh, it was Charles Robinson. You're right. Yeah, yeah. he's he's making calls to Charles Robinson <laughs> and, and making decisions. <laughs> right. Oh, that's God. hilarious. Yeah, that's cool. Casey, what's your number two? I would have to go with the Z Gangsters. Z Gangsta. You're going with Zeus Z Gangsta? Yeah. Wow. Another 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 Hulk Hogan adjacent pick, folks. There is a theme here with Casey's <laughs> list. He misses that Hulk Hogan poster so much he's picking anything anywhere somewhere close to Hulk Hogan. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean I mean, the thing about it, the guy was well known though. I mean Oh, very well known. I mean, too bad he died the last couple of years. I mean, he could keep an what eye on... What would his name happen to be? Do you know his name? Well, I they called him Tiny, but let's dox the guy, even though he's dead. <laughs> his name oh. Th- <laughs> Thomas Lister. He was Tiny Luster. That's that's what everybody he was known as. Yeah. But, yeah. But, um, a lot of times when he's in the tag team match, he can... He was so good, he can keep one eye on his opponent and on one eye on his tag team partner. At the yeah, he, he was looking both directions, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey, think about it. If you can keep one eye on both of them, I mean, you can't say you got, uh, you know, surprised. So That is true. So, is, that, well, is that the guy that the guy you guys are talking about? Is that D-Bell, right? That is, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think he was, uh, was Debo no in the barred. Friday movies and Zeus no and barred. No Holds Barred, yeah. Yep, okay, because I'm, like, trying to figure out, because I, I knew I'd seen him in WWF way back in the day, but, yep. like, WCW, I, I totally forgot he even had a run there. Yep, well, only a super fan like Casey would know <laughs> that Z Gangster was even a thing, but, yeah. <laughs> well, and, so. you know, the... the... 
between Zeus and Z Gangster, I mean, those are completely two different people. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not like, you know, WCW wanted to mark it off of the Zeus gimmick and they right. use Z Gangster, you know. It's kind of yeah. like how the one, two, three kid became six and the, you yeah. know, it, it was a whole thing, you know. Yeah. Well, I, wasn't six because he was like the sixth member of the NWO. That's why his name was. Six. Yeah. Yeah. What? what? No, he was, he was the fourth. Let's see, it was Hogan, Hall Nash, Ted DiBiase, and then him, right? No, I think that was, uh, there was another person before that. The Giant. Was there another one? The Giant. Giant was before six? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Because he was still in yeah. WC, he was in WWF, so. Yeah, I believe he I don't know, maybe, six. I'm not, I don't, I don't remember for sure. Yeah, I that's where he gets named six from. Yeah, I always thought he got the name Six because he was the one, two, three kid, and if you add all that up, it's Six. I mm. think it's a coincidence. It, it, no, it, either way, that's interesting. I mean, we learned yeah. something here tonight. That's crazy. Yeah. I'll be down. Well, my number two is going to be Nature Boy Ric Flair himself. You <laughs> know, so many things you can say, so many things we already know, but, you know, one thing you can say is, if it wasn't for Ric Flair, pro wrestling wouldn't be what it is today, what it, or what it has been in the past. And, I mean, hell, you just saw it, Ric Flair's last match. Nobody else could draw that crowd, that kind of old-school heat, that old-school feeling. Ric Flair, my, I mean, hell, Shawn Michaels cried whenever he had to retire him at WrestleMania, and yeah, that man. wasn't acting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just saying uh, WrestleMania when he kept super kicking him and he was like, yeah. I'm sorry, Rick. And, you know. Yeah. Just, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you could just tell in Shawn Michaels' face that this this wasn't, we're not playing. A, you could tell whenever he, whenever he kicks him one more time and then he pins him one, two, three, and he immediately grabs him. You yeah. knew that was, that was real. Because that yeah. was Shawn Michaels' favorite wrestler. You know, that was... Yeah. That was some pretty big stuff. And, I mean, if you watch Ric Flair's... Uh, the last Ric Flair roast that they had for Ric Flair's last match. I mean, hell, The Rock came out. You know, yeah. look at... How often do you see Undertaker at a wrestling event? You never yeah, did. Fairly but you old. saw him there with Mick Foley, Bret Hart, DDP, sitting front row. Yeah, this is the Jim Crockett promotions, yeah. It, right. I mean, you had, oh, well, who, uh, Ray Mysterio was there. He was backstage at the event because, you know, oh, SummerSlam was, was the night before. Yeah. So, I mean, it, Tony Schiavone said it felt like a Hollywood premiere in yeah. the backstage, you know, and oh, yeah. Ric Flair just meant so much to so many people. I mean, Ric Flair, if, if you put me in a, you know, middle of a room and say, Ric Flair's over there and Hogan's over there, I'm running to Ric Flair. There's not even a, I don't even have to think about it. And I love Hulk Hogan too, but you know, for it's like I said last week, my first match was Ric Flair versus Stank, and that okay. he will forever be on that Mount Rushmore. There's no way around it. So we're at numero uno now. Yeah, AJ is number one pick here. Yep. If if you don't know. He's synonymous with WCW. He was the only person that sure. never left WCW. The icon, the franchise of WCW. The guy that Triple H literally had to bury, Vince had to bury, <laughs> just to yep. claim WCW is completely dead. Sting. Oh, yeah. Vince Sting! You can't, I mean, come on, let's be real. I, I don't think Triple H buried him because they... Who was the one wrestling him? Triple H. Yeah. Who was the one behind it? Sting should have won that match. Exactly. I agree, but... It was the, all about WCW. I mean, they, they had how, to finish him. How often did Triple H lose at WrestleMania? Almost every time, right? The exactly. one time that he wins, he has to beat Sting. And, you know, they bring out DX and NWO to make it a spectacle about we're just going to screw it to WCW one more time. Yep, That's we won means. the war. Exactly. That's yeah. exactly what that storyline is. Pissed me yep. off and it should have never but, happened. By that time, it was well over a decade. 
I mean, right. it shouldn't be a whole thing like, oh, it's another shot at WCW. I mean, God, 31. I mean, God, was that 14 years after WCW closed? So, I'm like, exactly. how much more time do they need to, like, Excellent. I can understand. Yeah, remember Sting was the <laughs> final nail in the coffin. Every one of those boys came and went from WCW to WWE. Yep. Sting was the final holdout. He never wanted it to come because he could have came in 2001. He could have came in 2002. He yep. didn't like how the fact that the boys from WCW were getting treated, buried, and he never wanted them to get the Sting name. Never. Well, yeah, I heard about you know he really didn't like Booker T's run. I mean, oh well, yeah, well, when the well, when the Rock turns around in front of the whole crowd full of people and says, "Who are you?" Yeah, you know, well, Austin, that's Keaton, exactly. that's the Super biggest market. form of disrespect. And obviously, it's the Rock, and it's it's part of his gimmick. But yeah, that speaks a lot. You know what I mean? I I think it's overblown. I mean, like you said, it was the Rock, and I mean. I mean, it was just bad timing, quite frankly. I think even AJ, we were talking about this last uh, the last few days, where they sh- they should have waited until some of these big names were were free before yeah. they did the WCW angle. Exactly. This is what should have happened. This is going to come up on another episode because we sh- the next one we should do is what if. The biggest thing that WWE did with that stupid invasion angle in 2001, you yeah. should have waited until all those contracts that Turner had ran out before you even did an invasion cause angle. Cause right. What you want to do is get all those big players, your Ric Flair, your Sting, your Hogan, Hall, Nash, you had them all right after Survivor Series happened. They all came. Yeah, Everybody because came. because pretty much a lot of their contracts ended. Right after that, so they all like, did. So all um, did. they they definitely should have waited. It. I think they were itching to do it, they especially it too hard or too early. Well, I mean, they were teasing it from the beginning with you know, uh, right after when Shane got it, and they're yeah. like they were showing the wrestlers at WrestleMania. Yeah, but and, hell, even you had Bischoff right after. Survivor Series happened, came yeah. out. You, you could literally could have had Bischoff. That would have been a big but one. But the right charge. There. Like, I mean, come on. Yeah. You really, literally could have had Bischoff first. Yeah. In a fight. You, yeah. They dropped the ball so bad. I it, totally it, agree. This is definitely a NAR episode right there. So let's go ahead and move on to. My numero uno. It better not be Hulk Hogan. Somebody with Hulk Hogan, Casey. <laughs> Mine is he had his own faction. It's called the OWN. And oh, we know. And he is ultimate. He has a win over uh, Hogan back in. WrestleMania six, and and he, Halloween Havoc. No, he lost to Hogan in Halloween Havoc. Oh, he did. That's right. Oh, you're right. My best. My mistake. You gotta re- no, that's all right. I mean, you gotta remember when that fireball uh, ruined so much. I mean, it not only hurt him, it hurt. Uh, it flashed so much it went to Ho- burnt Hogan's eyebrows off too. Yep. So. I mean, you know, because of Hogan, he blindsided, uh, blinded the warrior. So, I mean, I think he gets a little bad rap about his promos on Nitro. I thought his Nitro promos weren't that bad. I mean, quite, I think they weren't that bad at all. Yeah, I actually, the beginning of it when he debuted, when... If was it the one with the when Warrior was looking in the when Hogan was looking in the mirror and he saw the Ultimate Warrior <laughs> that and then the little uh like his Ultimate Warrior sign like how Batman used to do that yes. you know the light would yeah 
those were cool. I actually like that. That was pretty cool. That yes. and uh, World War th- no, it wasn't World War Three. It was uh, Fall Brawl '98 in the uh, War Games match. But the smoke came up from both rings in the cage, and he came out from yeah. the trap door. Yeah, so that was pretty cool. I was going to use one of them to be my uh, the Renegade. That was mm. the rip. Rip Jesus, off. if you picked Renegade, I was going to have to kick you off of this Skype call. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was actually going to have a See, Renegade. Now, I'm surprised you didn't pick Fake Sting Jeff Farmer as number one. Oh, just to piss everybody I thought he off. was going to do that, too. That's, that's, what I, that's, that's what I thought you were going with. I was like, there's no, I mean, you know, I obviously. The combat, the, yeah, right. the combat my thing, I thought he was going right. to do Farmer. Right. Yeah, I was actually thinking about using the NWO's thing. Uh, <laughs> I just, well, I mean, uh, but then all those other gimmicks in between, like ten to like three. Well, Casey, you know, obviously your list is very specific. There's one, there's one thing I'm surprised you didn't pick. How, how did you not pick Steve Mongo McMichael's Chihuahua that he always held as he walked around? Well, that's yeah. a dog, and plus that dog didn't have a match. Well, it was, you know, it was so great. It, you know, everybody was scared to face it. You know, you could have went with something like that; it would have fit perfectly on your list. You know, so. Oh man, he just passed though too, didn't he? Damn it. Uh, he's not dead yet, I don't think. I, th- I, th- I think he's still fighting because he's got ALS or whatever, right? No, I think. Yeah, yeah he's in the hospital bed right now. Yeah. Uh, let me look that up. I'm I'm pretty sure he passed, but I could be wrong. No, he didn't pass away. He's still, but shout out to Steve Mongo and Michael. Yeah, Mongo, he, he, Mongo, he was, better. you know, he was a, you know, underrated yeah, horseman, in my opinion. He was cool. I always liked him. 85 I... Bears. I mean, come oh, on. Yeah. I really thought he died. He didn't die. Just... Well, you haven't wished death upon him yet, so quit talking to him. He might live. So. Jeez, <laughs> Casey, if you kill Mongo, you're going to have to do some challenges. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the guy is 64 years old, and God, he's in horrible shape. You killed Betty White when she was almost 100 years old. <laughs> What's your excuse? <laughs> well, well. You know, obviously, my number one pick, it's Sting. There's no other pick. He's my favorite. NWO Sting? Not NWO Sting. The man called Sting. The icon Sting. Oh. Uh, no, it, Jeff Farmer's great, but, you know, <laughs> I don't I don't need Wish.com Sting. I, I, I want the real thing. <laughs> you know what's funny about that? Is that Jeff Farmer still uses that gimmick to this day. Well, yeah, oh, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah, obviously. I mean, it's, I mean, hell, Scott Norton still uses it over when he's wrestling overseas. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, no, Sting, you know, there's, I could do a whole podcast just talking about him, but whether it's Surfer, Crow, Wolfpack, Joker Sting, you know, mm-hmm. you know, late 2000s Sting, whoever it was, Mr. WCW, even, even over Ric Flair, you know, yep. the, the dude. <sighs> He, he, you know, obviously, I mean, I've seen him in person a few times, but he has a, uh, he's one of those guys that has a humbleness about him. You know, he doesn't seem like he's a big deal. You know what I mean? He carries himself in such a way is one of the things that I like about him. But no, it's, you know, staying is number one for me. There's no way around it. It's not, you know. As much as I might like Ultimate Warrior, Jeff Farmer staying, you know, I, I got to go with the icon himself. But yeah, I mean, I'm sure that's no shocker or surprise, but, you know, I calls him like a season. So, oh, yeah. Damn. It's all good. I should have said NWO's thing earlier. Damn it. <laughs> I thought you were saving that for number one. I really did. I- well, you could always be an honorable mention because we still have that to do. Yeah, you do have an honorable mention. I mean, you know. You know what? I think uh, we could do a few of them. I'm getting a little tired, so. Uh, yeah, my phone's about to die on me anyways, but yeah. 
we've only but, been doing this for like four hours right now. Yeah. All, <laughs> but, yeah, you know, it's all good. It's, you know, I'll, I'll wrap us up here. It's, you know, obviously this is a WCW theme thing. We, you know, we do thank AJ for coming out and hanging out with us and bullshitting and dealing with our nonsense, you know, but um, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, you know, this is what you get on the Patreon. This is not quite the Sunday show and this is not less than serious. It's just like whatever the hell we want to talk about. So either way, we hope you liked it. Um, Casey, where can they find you, dude? Um, Casey is raw on YouTube and same thing as, uh, on Twitter. There you go. If you, uh, want to find AJ, you can message one of us and whatever we'll deal with that. But, um, I'm at slash revision on Twitter and, uh, we do thank you for watching and, you know, adios. We'll see you on the next one. Oh.